So last week we, we covered Gilgal. We could spend years on that. Mm -hmm. And what got us on that was the rain. What rain does. All right, rain speeds up the process. So um, this week, uh, what I'm trying to do in the, in the parshas is show the flow from one parsha to the next parsha of what the big picture may be. All right, so we'll keep Gilgal in our mind because that's where we ended. And I don't want to go back through the last ten parshas like I usually do. Of, <laughs> so. All right, by Midbar, this is the first book of Numbers. Hashem spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the tent of meeting on the first of the second month, in the second year after the exodus from the land of Egypt, saying, Take a census of the entire assembly of the children of Israel according to their families, according to their father's household, by number of the names, every male according to their head count. Twenty years of age and up, everyone who goes out to the legion in Israel, you shall count them according to their legions, you and Aaron. And with you shall be one man from each tribe, a man who is, who is a leader of his father's household. All right, this is the biggest, the big opening of our, our parsha. So, um, just real quick, if if you have your your tour in front of you, it's it's very interesting some of the names of these people and how they line them up. For instance, uh, for Simeon, uh, he he uh, Shalu Mel, the son of Zeri Shaddai, is his name. From Judah, Nashon. Now, do we remember anything about Nashon? Because it sounds a lot like Nakash. Yeah. What is Nashon? Do y'all remember who he was? What Nashon did? He's the one that parted the Red Sea. Remember? He's the one that stepped in and it moved. Oh, okay, okay. He's also the one that steps in at the Jordan River. And it moves. See? So there's a lot there's a lot going on here. And then from Dan down there in verse 12 we see Ami Shaddai. Mm -hmm. So we, we start seeing these guys' names are more than names. They're they are coordinates of Shaddai, which is Yesod. Which is Yesod. Ami is my people. Alright. And so and then this Parsha goes on to list every single way that they would line up from here to there from here to there first with Reuben and Simeon and Gad and Judah and Iskar and Zebulun and Ephraim Manasseh Benjamin Dan Asher and Naphtali the total all right and then uh, they talk about the encampments from the south encampments of Ephraim to the west encampments of Dan to the north and uh, I do have for y'all a visual that I normally don't have. And here is the encampment of, of, uh, of how they lined up with, this is east and this is west. So that would be like And this is north and this is south, yes. But Judah's facing the east because they always move that way. Judah always led, all right? And in the and and in the middle is the Levites. There's Gershom, Kohath, and Merari, and we're going to learn a little bit about that. And then on this side is Moses, Aaron, and his sons. And so it traveled this way, all right. And then in the middle is is the tabernacle. And so what you have are the are the, are the twelve the twelve tribes with the Levites in the center, all right. And we're going to find out why. We're going to kind of study and, and go through why they're they're on the periphery, and why the Levites are are in the center. Because it, it it becomes important to what God is constructing. What is God building here? We know whatever is here is there, but He's trying to get there here. 
because here should really be there and vice versa all right so he's trying to create union unity that's why you sowed all these names are kind of you sody like all right with Shaddai all right um, something something that was was uh, something that I thought was uh, pretty neat here's uh, Rabbi back sent me these these are these are the emblems on the banners um, and y'all, I can pass these around, and y'all can look at them. Who has the donkey? Uh, the donkey is uh, Iskar. Um, what I found very interesting here's another uh, version of the banners, and there's there's some of them that are pretty interesting. Joseph's was a unicorn. Really? Yes. Wasn't there a reason that they called that a unicorn? Maybe it's the same thing I'm thinking now. We talked about the Takash, that, that they was thinking that that was the unicorn. It's all, I, I'm not sure, but uh, I do know that there was 10 things made before that God created heavens and earth. Of course, there was a lot of things made, but 10 things made. You know, um, you know one is the staff of Aaron, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. And uh, one is one was this one-horned animal that Abraham, that Adam sacrificed for the fall, hmm. because the whole shofar thing comes from a yeah, one horn. That's right. That's right. All right. So um, you know everything. I watched a show this week on mermaids. You know so. You know, are there mermaids? I don't know, but why not? Are there unicorns? I don't know, but why not? Does it, you know, we know there's, well, we have evidence there was dinosaurs, but we don't have them now. So, you know, if, if we had them at one time, fine. If we don't, if we don't have them, that's fine too. But the, the Parsha today deals with this counting thing, right? Well, um, what do we know? What do we know about counting Jews? And this really goes to counting anything. What do we know? Well, you know what's supposed to count. You can't count. You cannot count. Them. So what's up with the counting? So what's up with the counting? No, and and especially you cannot count what people. Their heads. Yeah. Well, we have a problem. You know, you can't say they're, you know, you know, you, 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 you cannot count. So, you cannot count anything. You shouldn't count your cattle. You shouldn't count the people on a team. You shouldn't count your students. You shouldn't count anything. Now, we have a problem here because it says... Take a census of the entire assembly of the children of Israel according to their families, according to their father's household, by numbers of names, every male according to their head count. Well, it says head count. So why does it say something that you cannot do? Where's the scripture prior to this that says you cannot count? Well, um, I'll have to look. I, but rem I remember I, uh, King I, I, David I, wasn't supposed to. Yeah, and, and, yeah. and what happened when King David counted? They had a plague that went through there and wiped them out. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I'll have to find that. But it's kind of a principle that you can't. We have a problem. What is the term used for head? Rush? Catcher? Catcher. All right. Let's keep that in mind. But the term here used is gul galet. Gul? Gul galet. Gul galet. Which means skull. 
it also uh, there is a term called Gulgala which is the brain of a reek on peen. Now, what did we just get through going last week's Parsha was on what? Transmigration. Transmigration of the soul. And what is that term called? Gilgul. Gilgul. So what is he saying here? What is this head count really? What? Yeah. He's counting souls. He, he's counting souls. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. He's counting souls because he just told everybody how to keep their souls pure last week mm. and how to elevate their souls. So what are all of these people doing? They're aligning the soul of whom? Adam. Adam. This entire construction in this Parsha of where you line up was where your spark, your neat soap fell out of. Are the air all gone? Air of Raw are, on, are out, way outside. Yeah, this is this is the inner the camp. Deal, yeah. This is the inner camp. And if we, uh, where's, where's those, uh, you remember that deal I had of the temple and the tabernacle that I showed you all? That if you, it was, it was, it's the image of a man. That was. Uh, remember, yeah, the, the, remember that uh, printout? Uh, um, yeah, the messianic. Uh, the printout. Do, do we have a copy of that? I, you know, I know I had a copy of it, but it's in the it's in the old notebook. Yeah. Which one is it now? No. It's you know, called the, the Metallic Messiah. Metallic Messiah. Maybe I got it over here. Anyway, y'all remember it. Y'all remember it. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the tabernacle, if you look at the temple, it is laid out in the shape of a man. Alright? Mm -hmm. That's what the camps were. Not only that, they are reconstituting down here the head, the skull, the brain of Zah. Because if it's Zah here, it's a reek there. You see what I mean? You, you, you know yeah, it's the head here, the head there, yeah. Yeah, you see what I mean? They're doing the lower. <coughs> if, do y'all remember this um, on Rabbi Back's book? And the shadow that's in the back of it are, are the coordinates. It looks like a map of a building. That's what this is. That's the brain, the mohin, the brain of a reek on peen, which is where everything emanates out from. So what, are the, what, is, what is all of this and... You know, give me and you're on this side, and you're on this side, and you put your camp over here, and you pick. These, God is telling them to reconstruct the body of Adam here. He, he fixed them all up, and he cleaned them all up. And now, Adam is going to be reconstructed. Once Adam is reconstructed, then the Yesod in the tabernacle, there can be union with Zah and the Nukva because they are the Nukva. But who is who is the Nukva? Where's that where's that deal? Who's in the center? The, the tabernacle. The, the Shekinah. Who? The, the, Levites. the Levites. Levites. Because Levites are always on the left. They're Guva Road. They're the judges. Right. So what happens when Guva Road is in the center? It's, it's, it's in with union Hesed. with it's Hesed. in mitigated union with Hesed. Zah, with the Hesed. Now, that is a big conglomerate overview of what's going on here. Now, and Russell, you said a very important term. 
in in the words take a census the 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 word for that is rosh as in rosh ashana rosh rosh ashana what is that what does rosh mean head it means head and who is the head of the whole deal the shekhinah so, which is Malchut. Which is Malchut. So he's he's reconstituting the head of Yesod, which is the Malchut, which is the Shekhinah. Once that structure is all built back together by the human portion of Israel, which is the Shekhinah, mm -hmm. and it's all collectively lined up and in order then heaven and earth can connect. Heaven is Zeranthim, earth is the Malchut. Zah and Nukva can connect and have union. And that's how the light would flow down. Arik to Abba Ima. Arik to Abba Ima. Bina to Zeranthim. Zeranthim to Malchut. This is why Rachel's children, I mean Leah's children, are listed first. And Rachel's children are listed last. See what he's doing? He's not only putting them in order of where their neat so so is, where their fallen spark is, reconstituted, he's putting them in order from higher to lower. Now, we see that there are, in, in Exodus 30, in Parsha Kitisah, we find Hashem spoke to Moses saying, when you, see, he's all, this is, this is before the golden calf. When you take a census of the children of Israel, according to their numbers, every man shall give an atonement for his soul. See, the census is for atonement. That's why I said with our charity box here that when you give charity, it is more than charity, it is atonement for the soul. So, what scripture is that? It is 3011 of Exodus. Every man shall give Hashem an atonement for his soul when counting them so that there will not be a plague amongst them when they are counted. Then they counted the shekels and not the people. They counted the shekels and not the people. And we're going to find out why. This shall they give everyone who passes through the census a half shekel. I'm reading in Exodus. A half shekel of the, sac of, of the sacred shekel. The shekel is 20 geras. A half shekel of portion to Hashem. To give to the portion of Hashem to atone for your soul. You shall take silver of the atonements from the children of Israel and give it for the work of the tent of meeting. And it shall be a remembrance before Hashem of the children of Israel to atone for for your souls. Well, we know anytime you got soul, you got Gilgal going on. All right, and 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 the whole head thing is is for Gilgal. What are they trying to do? They're trying they're trying to what fell out the ot. Where is that located? In the head. They're trying to revive the consciousness of Adam. Which is Clay Israel actually all together doing mitzvah, doing all lined up as they should be. That then then God is here. As he would be here now if, if that was the case. As was the case then, boom. The glory of God was in the tabernacle and you know, you couldn't go near. That's when the power was. Because Adam Adam was what were they doing? They were resurrecting Adam. That's what they were doing. 
Was it stimulation? Were they were they trying to? It was stimulation from below. It was the ultimate. If they thing. were if they were erecting Adam down here, he was being erected up there. Yeah, right? okay. and then once he's erected there, then he then then the sowed mm -hmm. can hit Malchut. Boom, boom. So why do you not count? And the reason is to not alert the other side. Because when you consciously or unconsciously point something out, so to speak, you separate it from the whole. Because you give it a singular identity. There's one, there's another, there's one. What is that? That's separating something from the whole. If there's nothing here but God, everything is one thing, you cannot separate out. When you separate it out, guess what? The other side has it. So, not to bring a plague amongst you, is what it says. This is the ayin hara, the evil. You don't want it to give an opening for the evil eye. You never want to draw attention to anything to draw down the forces of judgment, especially in the body of Adam. This is the same rule for Gilgal. Now, I mentioned there were, there were two heads. The one head, talking about the census, it, it lists two heads. This word is called adopt. The two heads is this whole this thing is called adopt. What is what is adopt? Da. Da. Yeah. She was constructed, the Shekhinah was constructed in her ten sporadic structures. Adot. This adot is the word for entire assembly. So when he says that take a census rosh of a dot, you see what he's talking about? Fix, he's fixing the brain of the dot. He's fixing the dot of the brain. So he, this, that, that's why in, in these parshas where it seems just so monotonous, the blah, the blah, the blah, the blah, the blah, that's where the most awesome things, and, and I knew it was going to be that way. The most awesome things are encoded in there. He's reconstructing the da'at the of Adam right here. This is the congregation of Israel. This is rooting the lower in the upper. The families, the reason it says families, this is the Gilgal family of the body of Adam. And it says the house. See, it says right here, take take a census, Rosh, of the entire assembly, a dot, of the children of Israel, Jacob, according to their families, according to their Gilgal, according to their soul roots, mm -hmm. according to their Nitzot mm -hmm. according to their father's house, according to who's the father? The Holy One. Who's the house? The Shekhinah. You see what he's so what he's doing there? Every name is on the level of a Nitzot spark, von spark, according to their level in the body of Adam. The males. And it says count count the males. Why does it not say the females? Because you don't want to put the other side. I don't know. No, you don't. Uh... Read verse four. And with you shall be one. You shall count them according to their legions. Oh, What's he man. saying? 
And the man and woman is is it's in union. union. They they they're one. That's right. So you don't. And he created in the beginning. He created them, male and female. So if this is the reconstruction of Adam, they wouldn't separate. There anymore. wouldn't be no women counted. There you go. Because because they're all one thing. He's not going to separate them out. Because when you say male, you it's Hasidim and Guvaro. Mm -hmm. It's Adamic. They were Adamic. All right? The female clings to the male. This is Hug. Therefore, they go up together. Union. Each male. It is the Tikkun itself. The head count, the shekel coin, because you cannot have nitso in a structure of ten, and it has to be rooted in the keter. This is the crown. So, um, this this uh, w what they're doing is is all these nitsots are are structuring themselves into ten. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Each one of each one of these families is an entire part sufim. This family, this family of Gads here, this family, it's just a part suf and a part suf and a part suf and a part suf. All the part sufs had been reestablished. Alright? When did when did they count? When did they take accounting? First time they took accounting was when they left Egypt. Why'd they have to take another county? Well, you know, yeah, you know, how how much of the body of Adam did we get out? You know? Well, they, yeah, they had some issues. Uh, they had know. some issues. Mm -hmm. So they lost some of them. They lost them because some stayed. Yeah. So how much did we get out? How many souls? Because remember, remember Joseph and the 70 souls he made, the souls, the 70 souls? This is the seven lower parts of Fiend that, that he made You're in Egypt. You're talking about Yaakov and the 70 souls that came down? Yeah, Yaakov. Jacob and the 70 souls that came down to Egypt. Yeah, okay. See, he was going down to plant the seed that was mm -hmm, going mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. come out as the part theme of the whole structure. That's what it was. He's building... They're all, what are they doing? They're building Adam. No, that's right, because the parts of theme is nothing but the shattered Adam. That's right. So you that's know, right. all the different parts of Adam. So they were putting it back. Together. And where did they have to go? They had to go to the Nukva. Where was the Nukva? Egypt is the Nukva. Why? But why does it look the way it did? Because it had prolapsed. It was turned inside out. So is this on a physical level? Physical or is level. This a high. This is they're doing it on a physical level. To whatever whatever they build here is built there. It's it's a mirror image. Okay, so are we talking about maybe bodies coming together? Or yes, oh, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, I mean, you know, Jacob goes down with with the seventy souls with his family, and then those seventy souls, those seventy people. See, they called them seventy souls. They didn't call them people. Right. All right. And then those people had more people and more people and more people, and then. You know, 210 years later, Moses takes them out of there, and there's three million of them. Right, but I'm talking about. Oh no, yes. these are these are people. This is the tribe of Ephraim, right. the tribe of Manasseh, and the tribe of Benjamin. But within that whole tribe, there may have been 200, 235,000 of them. Yes, but you're saying that they're rebuilding, reconstructing Adam. So I'm trying to get: is it on a physical level, or is this spiritual? It's yes. both. It's it's physical here. It's spiritual there. But once the physical is done, the spiritual is done. Now you have, now you have, and all of a sudden God shows up. So it's something we probably can't even imagine what it looks like. Oh, you you can't even imagine the power of it. Right. Mm. But that's that's the key to what's going on is to do it in the physical and to break yes. down the spiritual, and and it comes together and then you have then it flips. Then it flips. Then all of a sudden God's here. God has to have a docking station. So if we weren't so ignorant, we yes. could do things with the purpose of bringing down this, God's. That's the secret presence. of. That's the <laughs> secret to of for the sake of heaven. You got it. Yeah. yeah, we're trying not to be so ignorant. That's, that's the whole point of the you, class. You, you summed it up. 
It, what, I'm we're, talking about the people in this room. I mean. <laughs> yes, yes. You, you're talking about humanity as a whole. I, I know. Here's the deal. If, if, for one second, everybody would do Torah, one second. At the same time. That's that. That's the whole thing. And so, why do we learn Torah? Because we're trying to get God here. We're trying to elevate our soul. We're trying to elevate our our sparks, our neat soul. We're 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 trying to do what they did. You know, and so as, but we have a lot harder time than they did, because. You know, they were in the living room, we we're in the sewer. <laughs> you know, it's, it's so, but, but this is what is going on. He, Moses is the da'at of Adam, basically. He's the living, walking, conscious da'at of Adam. And he is putting everything back where it's, every, the entire body of Adam was constructed. And what happens? Then the Shekhinah shows up. Who's that? That's Hava. It's all there. It's the same thing. Boop, 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 boop. He in his name. 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 That's all it is. Now, was I? Three times. They counted when they left Egypt. After the golden calf. Because their son died. And now, he's reconstructing every cell of the body of Adam. If you count it, you separate it out from the Ian so. And why can you not count the heads? Because we talked about it earlier, kind of before everybody got here. What do we do with Ketra? It's kind of yeah, yeah. You don't, you don't, you, you don't, you don't deal, with deal with it. it. You yeah. don't deal with it. So it's too far above. If you yeah. can't deal with it there. You can't deal, deal with, with it, it here. here. That's the secret of not counting heads. Because we don't deal with Ketra. It's too... We don't... Yeah, yeah, we, we talk about a reek and a teak and everything, but, but, but we don't deal with them. We're, we're trying... We're, we're talking we're, about theoretically. Yeah, yeah, we're no, talking we're about, it, you know, yes, it exists, but what are we going to do with that? We... <coughs> We we got to deal with the nuke first. We're, we're in the kingdom. We're down here in Malchut, much less, and so you don't count heads. And so, you know, um, but what do they do at school every day? They want you to take roll. Mm -hmm. All they're doing. Field trip. Always count. All they're doing. All they're doing. What you do? Here's how you do it. You get coupons or or little. Uh, poker chips or whatever and you give every kid a poker chip you know how many poker chips you got you give every kid a poker chip mm. when you get on the bus I want your poker chip and you catch your poker chips I got all my kids or stickers or, something. or stickers or whatever what whatever you don't you don't count the people you don't count the cows you don't count the deer you don't count the nothing Ranchers love to count how many heads of cattle they have. Yeah, and if they didn't, their cattle would probably go. <laughs> they'd probably get a bunch of them. But now they get black leg, and they get this, and they get all these diseases, and they get pink eye, and they get. Yeah. I even had someone years ago ask me, "What do they mean by head of cattle? What do you do when you when you're counting heads of cows? What's the head? What's a head?" Mm-hmm. Yep. And this this is what they give. This is every everything stems from Torah. And the first thing that a big group will do, they'll have people assign you count this section, you count that section, you're in charge of this section. Yeah. You don't want to count anything. They single and it's, they always they're always singling it out. And they they're singling out his herd because he's he's so obsessed with counting it. How many cows he's got today? Did he lose any? Did they have any calves? And he and he's put so much energy into con his concentration on that herd of cattle, that that draws attention to yes. it, 
and and the, lets the uh, the the backside or whatever lets the virus in. Lets the virus in, and then he gets like you said the black foot and the there you go hoof and mouth and whatever. Yep. That's it. That's done by church. Now, <laughs> so what has happened is we have gone from transmigration, right? Mm -hmm. Transmigration. I came up with this today. To trans. Figuration. Souls transmigrate. What are souls? Nitso. Sparks, holy sparks. They're, they have transiterated down here. Now they're transmigrating, but once they've all transmigrated and they're all in a clump, they're transfigured. So we went from Gilgal from transmigration. To transfiguration in this portion. They have rebuilt it. They rebuilt Adam. Alright? Um, where was that I wanted to... Uh, <coughs> hey Mike, I got a quick question. Sure. You know, what about what about the tithe? Because the tithe is separating from the whole. To do a ten percent tithe, that means that you have to have a basically a accounting of a hundred percent. So yeah, comment well, on that. Well, the tithe. What is it? See, the, the and and I was I was just looking for that scripture because the Christians have have polluted the tithe. What is the tithe? Ten percent. Mm -hmm. What's 10% in Kabbalah? Yeah, who knows? What's the 10th? Malhut. Oh. Malhut. It's about restoring the Nukva and the Shekhinah. It's not about giving 10% of your money. As it, and not only that, what 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 is uh what is the what what is the 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 letter Yud? What's the value of the letter Yud, Russell? Ten. Ten. It's about the Yud. Yud, hey, Vav, hey. Right. You get, so, in other words, it is more about the consciousness of Hesed. And it, it really has, has very little to do with money. But I'm looking for the scripture here. That um, you talking about the Malachi scripture? Here's no, no. Here, here's a scripture in Numbers that you, since you brought that up, that that the Christians have turned around to talk about the tithe because see, they have no concept of what the tithe is. Number one, there is no tithe unless there's a temple. There is no temple. There is no tithe. First of all. Second of all, it says here in 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 Numbers. 3, 48. You shall give the money to Aaron and his sons as redemption for the additional ones among you. Moses took the money of redemption from those who were in were in the excessive of redemptions for their souls. Alright? So what what's what does the money do? It atones for your soul. Problem. Look back in Exodus. You shall take silver of the atonements from the children of Israel to work in the ten of meaning, and it shall be a remembrance for Hashem for the children of Israel to atone for their souls. Well, what have the televangelists done? If you give your money, we can build these churches and God can forgive your sins, and that's what fixes your soul. And they're all about give, 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 money, money, money. What did God mean? Well, let's find out. He said give silver. Why silver? Do we know anything about silver? If Guvarot is gold, mm -hmm. then, Hesed has to be silver. then Hesed has to be silver. It says to give a Hesed. Why? Kindness, yeah. Why? Why? Well, 
Let's look over here in the Torah here. Because the Torah explains everything. Wouldn't it be charity? No, Wouldn't it has be... nothing to do with charity. If you look in your Torah in Numbers 3, mm -hmm. 33. Um, it goes on and talks about it, it, it talks about Gershom and his family did this, Kohath and his family did this, and if you look in the middle of these deals, it's talking about it's talking about these guys here. There's Gershom, there's Kohath, and there's M Miramar, and then Moses, Aaron, and his sons. And so, so we're dealing with these three. These three. What do what <clears throat> what did I say about the Levites? They were the 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 Nukla. Levites are the Nufa, but what is feminine? Goo, it's Goo It's Goo So, So what do you give Goo Game show. Hesed! Silver! That's how you mitigate it. Right. So let's let's look. Let's look. Let's look. It gets better. Miramar and the family of the Mahalites Ma Malites and the family of the Mushites. They were the Miriite families. Their count according to the numbers of every male from one month of age and up. Now, a while ago, we were counting to 20 and up. Remember? Mm -hmm. We're only, this is one month and up here. To 6,200. It goes on and goes on and says, now, the, now, this is what he's in charge of. He's in charge of the planks of the tabernacle and the pillars. What what would we say a plank and a pillar would resemble? What? On our sphorotic structure. It would be the columns. The middle, middle, the, the, the column. column. But yes. what is what would yes, be what? Yes, so. Oh yeah, yeah, yes, so. Okay. All right. So he's in charge of that. He's in charge of its sockets and its utensils <laughs> and its accessories because. If we look at Gershom, 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 this is important. Gershom is in charge of the tent, the tent and the coverings, and the screen and the curtain of the courtyard. All right? And so he's in charge of the fabrics. Mm -hmm. Kohath, he's in charge of the ark, the table, the menorah, the altars, the utensils. But Miramar, Mir Mirari, he's in charge of the planks, the bars, and the sockets. All right? The foundation of the thing. What do we know about foundation? You, uh, uh, you sowed uh, uh, is you sowed. the foundation. Stone, right? You sowed. Mm -hmm. So, why the silver? Because... If they, if the, what they did was they lined the holes with the silver. How many pillars did they have? How many pillars? Yeah. How many pillars? Twelve. If, if you had to guess. Twelve. They had forty. They had forty. Yeah, that was a bunch. They had forty, like the like the mem, forty. All right. So. Guess what these sockets are called? Adonim, as in Adonai. They're called Adonim. Adonai is the Nukva. So they're putting silver, Hesed, into the earth, Malchut, of the Levites, Guver wrote, and that's what mitigates it, and that's why it atones for the soul. It's not the money that does it. It's the silver that does it. It's Hasidim and Guver wrote, and the dance of who that does it. That's why the Levites are in the middle. They used to be on the periphery. But now, when they're reconstituting the body of Adam, they're on the inside. Where was Eve? Inside, inside Adam. 
It's in union. So, but what happens when it gets twisted and, there, and it's the tenth, the tenth being the yud, which is the head, or the tenth being the tenth spherot is malchut. When malchut gets turned inside out, now it becomes a tenth of money instead of the tenth spherot. And you lose your silver because it's because you're given dollars. Nothing's being mitigated. It's not fixing. It's not fixing anything. So, the whole thing with the tithe of the shekel and the silver has to do with mitigation of Hasidim and Guvarot, so that the other side can't get in. They've made a sealed container. It's hermetically sealed. And therefore, there's, if the virus can't in, get in, their souls are, are fine. But the tithe of the flower, of the this, that, that's just the edges, you know, the edges of the crop, the edges of this, that's just, that's just so they can eat because they had no, they, their, their job was to be in union with God. And so somebody had to go get the food and bring them in there to make the bread and all, all these kind of things. But that, that, that's another story. So, um, we we find here. I kind of got ahead of myself, but that was Lonnie led me into it. It was good. <laughs> um, why twenty? It says it says you should count them for twenty. Because twenty at the age of twenty is when everything gets its mohim, gets its brain, gets its gets its Abba. Yeah, it's the level of soul maturity. It's the level of Abba. It's the level of Abba. So, you you have at 13, when they do the Bar Mitzvah or Bat Mitzvah, mm -hmm. at 13, this is the level of Ima. Mm -hmm. Like 13 attributes of the beard, that comes from the, from down, because Bina is a lower than Abba that flows down through Za. Mm -hmm. Alright? And then, that's the inner light. But we learned that the surrounding light, the light of the Makif, comes in at guess what age? 40. 18. What do we know about 18? The uh, spine. Chaya. Yeah, Chaya. Yes, the spine. So at 18, you get your surrounding light. And at 20, you get, that's when Abba, when, that's when you get the combination, the union of Abba Ima at 20. That's why anybody that dies before the age of 20 is not judged by the courts of heaven. They can't be. Because they are not elevated enough. They're souls. So, all babies go to heaven. Now, um, this makif, this is what the Jews do in their marriage. You know, the canopy, the marriage canopy. What is the marriage canopy? The makif, the surrounding light. So that's why a lot of them get married at 18. I saw a big deal on the internet the other day where there were 25,000 Orthodox Jews at this wedding because one of the rabbi's sons was 18 getting married and he's going to be one of the, he's like one, the next big spiritual leader over there. It was, it was huge. They were coming in from all over the world. I've never seen a wedding that big in my life. Um, so 20, the Makif, the surrounding light, the canopy for marriage. This is the surrounding lights of Ima. Uh, together with the Mohin of Abba. This is a spiritual level. This is why a man's body is not full grown until it is 20. And you cannot go to the army in Israel until you're 20. Then you go to the army because that's when you get the level of Chaya. 
when you're 20. So that's why all that's why they don't have 16, 17, 18, 19 year old kids in the army in Israel. Yeah, they wait till you be judged by the courts of heaven before they get you killed. Well, they also they also want you to be to have the Mohin of Abba so that you have the intelligence of Abba to do what needs to be done. You, you, you don't make foolish decisions, so to speak. Um, so, um, one of the things that it says in uh, the Exodus chapter that I'm referring to prior to the golden calf is uh, when it talks about uh, taking the senses, it says, and when you lift up, you know, it's talking about the souls. It's talking about these neat so that, that what they're doing is they're on a journey to lift up, to reconstitute Adam. <clears throat> this, um, <clears throat> back to the silver. Okay, the silver, the silver socket, wh wh why were they making a silver socket? Because the socket was to receive from that which was above. So, why why the silver? This was given before the golden calf to count with the shekel. What is God doing? See how smart God is? He's atoning for the sin of the golden calf. He's atoning when? Before. Before it ever happened. That's he right. doesn't set a, he doesn't set the mechanism in place. That's right. That's well, why they had to build the tabernacle. That's right. Because the gold messed up Malchut, the Nukva. Because it's Guva wrote. Mm -hmm. So the tithe of the silver, the tithe of the silver is to is not for money, it's to correct. That's why it atones for your soul. Because it corrects for the sin of the golden calf. What's the sin of the golden calf? Separation, separating from Hashem. That's the sin of the golden calf is every sin. And he put a fail-safe mechanism in it prior to it even happening. Genius. I wish I had thought of that. He already mitigated and rectified the golden, golden calf to atone for their souls before they ever even did it. Unbelievable, huh? Um... So, let's see here. Now, this, this Miramar, that means uh, bitter. The, the bitter waters. Mi uh, mar. Mm -hmm. Alright? So, see, the guy that was in charge of that's name was bitter. Because he was doing, he was, he was the guru. And he was taking the sweetening of the silver and he was in charge of putting the poles, making the connection and, and setting it, erecting the tabernacle. And then Gershom, you know, he put all the coverings over it, his, his, his family of Levites. And then everybody, did, and then uh, uh, Koha, uh, his family did all the, in, in, the interior decorating. And so that's how they did it. And Moses and Aaron did, did what they did. And then... This is this is setting up. This is this is this is making the pillars, all the pillars, the whole thing lined up, the columns lined up, the whole body of Adam was aligned. Up. And I thought it was interesting how Aaron and his family was there to oversee it to make sure that they only did what they were supposed to do, mm -hmm. so the outside could not come in. Yes, and you know if the outside came. The outside couldn't even come near a looker; they would die. Mm -hmm. um, let me see if I, I've got some stuff I was going to. Um... Now, when he when he talks about replacing the firstborn with the Levites, can you elaborate on that? Um, I didn't study that part. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, But the formula, the formula probably still works. That that the uh, um, what was the first 
The first was the shattering of the vessels of Tohu. That's the pure Guva rope. So he put the holy yeah. Guva rope in for the contaminated Guva rope because the first was always contaminated. Mm -hmm. You know, Abraham's son, his first one, contaminated. Esau, you know, all the first are always. And Levi was not the first. And Levi was not the first. But he was from the side, he was Guva rope. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, the first one. Huh? Because he was from the first wife. No, it's not. It doesn't have to do with the first wife. It it has to do with the first emission of uh, semen. That's the first. Let's set that somewhere. We anyway. All right. Gonna gonna go a little bit in here. Um. It talked. It, it talked a little bit about um, um, when I was trying. When I, I was trying to figure out, I was trying to figure out why uh, Maori is different than the rest of them. That that was what that was what had me. And then uh, you get in here into the apples, and it's saying God spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, "Lift up the head of the son of Kohath amongst the Levi," and. Um, and then when he's talking to Gershom, uh, lift up the head of the sons of Gershom as well. But when he's talking to uh, Mirari, he says, number them according to their families. And so what's going on here, uh, the expression lift up the head is not used. It is uh, according to uh, the level that they're on. Boom, boom, boom. One's doing the lower. He's, he's the femi he's the, the feminine part. He's the Malchut part. And one's doing this part and one's doing that part. They each had their, had, had their levels. The overall tribe of Levi is the source of the five states of Guvarot, as is known, the crown of Guvarot, which is the feminine portion. So the Levites, once they were inside the, the tabernacle, they were considered as female. They were feminine. But they were the holy of holies, feminine. That's why God would commune there with them because he, his, his Hesed, his masculine, had to have a feminine docking station. All right? Um, the first cat, there, there's, there's, there's three categories, but I'll just kind of go through. The crown of Guvarot, which comprises of five states of Guvarot, is situated at the level of the brain of the Ot of the Nukva. So see, they were... These Levites were the Da'at of the Nukva. And this is the source of the five states of Groove Rope described in the subtext. These five states of Groove Rope, as they spread further through her body, i.e., from her Hesed to her Hod. And so, um, these are these five states of Groove Rope are called Ma'im Nukvim. They were the feminine waters. That's what, that's what the Levites were. They were the Ma'im Nukvim. They, they were what constituted and produced the part suf of uh, the Nukva, which allowed Zah, the Yesod, to transfer the states of Guvarot via to her Yesod through their first sexual encounter or intercourse, which in turn it turned them into a vessel. These Guvarots that he transferred to her Yesod in their subsequent intercourse, when they coupled for the first time, this gives a new state of Guvarot. These clans of Levites were Gershom, Kohath, and Merari. Mer now, we can either say, we can go like this. It, it's going to work all the way down. We can say, you know, uh, Gershom, Kohath, Mary, or we can go here. One, two, three. One, two, three. That because of what he's saying is it's extending all the way from 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 here all the way through her her hode. 
which is connected to your soul. All right? Now, however, since there are five states of Guvaro, the Levites are counted up to the age of 50. That's why. You count them from, I think, 30 to 50. was the So you count them up to 50 because there's five states of Guvaro. This is the meaning of the phrase, according to their families of their father's house. There are two female parts Sufim constructed out of these five states of Guvaro. One is Leah. The other is Rachel. Rachel as is known. So, um, the, the, the first to be built is Leah, who is called their father's house. This is because our sages call the woman home. Leah is higher of the two houses. Since she absorbs light, she is more concealed. Whereas, Rachel is more revealed. The numerical value of, for the word, not their father's house, but their father's. This is Rachel. So when he's when he's numbering and he's he's using these terms, their father's household, their fathers, their families, everything is a codex for where they are lining up in the part Sus of Adam as it which is Jacob, Israel, right? Mm -hmm. As it lines up with either Rachel or Leah. So that's that's not only is he constructing the male part, he's reconstructing the female part, which is the Levites. Now, once these lights, these 370 lights, I, I skipped some, but once these 370 lights reach Joseph, i.e. Yesod of Zerampim, they pass, they pass through his back to the part Sufim of Rachel, which is situated there. This is the mystical meaning of Rachel was of beautiful form and of beautiful appearance. She receives the attributes of Joseph, whereas Leah, the higher parsum, was not to be was not revealed as beautiful at all. Why? Because she was concealed. Revealed and concealed. What about the two handmaidens? Uh, Zilhan Bilhan. Zilhan Bilhan? Yeah. They're, they're listed last. It, 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 they're, they're listed in order. They're, they're listed okay. secondly. It appears to me that this is the uh, mystical... Uh, uh, it appear, this, is, this is from the Rabbi Chaim Vital. So, we can take his words for what they are. <laughs> it appears to me that uh, that is, is the mystical significance of the verse, and then Joseph and Rachel approached and bowed down. Rachel was behind Joseph. In other words, when she when she was with Joseph, she was already situated if they went in somewhere as his back part suit. Already. Because although we draw Malchut, the Nukva, down at the bottom, it's not where it is. It's really situated behind you so. It's really situated behind you so. Because woman is not beneath man on your so, which is which is directly opposite your so. Does that make sense, to everybody? Without me getting too graphic. No, I, I'm but in flat land. Unfortunately, you drop I, it so you I, I might have needed some more graphics, but I'll figure it out. Uh, <laughs> I was hoping I wouldn't have to go there. Okay, I, I, I'll work on it. Okay. So <laughs> she behind or in front? <laughs> behind. Behind. Mm -hmm. She's behind. Two steps but, behind. But in four D, in four D, behind is, you know, where's behind? Right. Because remember, Adam and Eve were made back to back. Mm -hmm. All right, and they they were they were apart, so they could turn. And face each other. This is the whole secret of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Mm -hmm. um, now, the sons of Miramar. I, was, I kept calling it Miramar, like the like the like the place in California where Top Gun was filmed or whatever. The Miramar, the you know, yeah, the yeah, naval, yeah, the yeah, naval yeah, air force. Yeah. <laughs> Marari, the sons manifest five states of Guru themselves. But they manifest the five states of Guru of the feminine waters because, as we said, they are low. All right. 
that exist in the Asoda of Nukva. This is why they are called bitter, referring to the states of judgment, severe judgment, that they compromise. For they are the lowest states of Gurot or the Nukva. Third son? Does it list them in order? <clears throat> uh, it lists them in order of soul root Ele- soul level. Root. I, I don't know if it lists them in order of that that they were born, but it lists them in order of their ele- elevation, mm-hmm. of their coordinate. Now, <clears throat> we, we we get back. Let me, I, I skipped over something that's that's important. Uh, There are there are seven uh, three hundred and seventy lights that she absorbs. What are these lights that she absorbs? With regards to these three hundred seventy lights, it is known that there are three hundred seventy lights that shine from the upper face of Zah, Zaron P. I explained elsewhere. They explain there that they spread out in a straight descending line until they reach Yeso. This is this phenomenon is called shalom or peace so shalom is supernal mating and we call it peace but these are the 370 lights that go from the beer yeah. through through za to yesod of za that enters the nuclear this is because the sphere of the sod is represented by a small valve whose numerical value is 6. And when the 370 lights descend to it, they add up to 376, the numerical value of shalom. shalom. As you know, all these 370 lights are states of chesed. And this is why they descend to your sod. This is also why Joseph was of beautiful form and beautiful appearance from the glow of these 370 lights. This is the mystical reason why our sages say the glory of the face of the beard. For someone who possesses the attribute of Yesod, the attribute of Joseph, has a beard and the glory of the face, which is, as we said, is these 370 lights. A eunuch, in contrast, who lacks the attribute of Yesod, lacks the glory of the face, i.e., lacks the beard. Okay, now you got, you got, you got. You're calling that the the glory of the of the beard or the glory of the face? It's the same thing. Well, okay, uh, let's say yeah. the glory of the face, and that's three hundred and seventy. But it, 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 it's it's the lights going from yes, from the lights of Hesed from from Arik to Zah. I mean, it goes through the whole thing. It goes from Arik to Abba. To Ema, to Za, to Nufa. It's, it just makes a it makes a trick. Because it it doesn't really come from Bina, but remember Bina. So it would be a a, a teak what a a teak uh, a teak yo mean to uh, Arik on Ping. To a Arik on Ping. And from Arik on Ping to Abba. Because no, I mean but the beginning of it is, is a teak yo mean, right? Well we, we at the beginning of it would be the Ian Sof. Right. To Ak uh-huh. through um, Adam Kadma, uh, Adam, Adam okay. Harishon, Adam Harishon, to Atik Yomim, to Arik Anmim, uh, Anpim, to Atik Kadesha, to Abba, through Zah, to the Nuk. That would be the whole thing. But the beginning of it, it, it begins with the Ain Sof to the Nuk, the 376 lights. Yeah. But there's 376 lights there, right? Yeah, because once it hits you, so it's six. There's 370, but once it hits you, so it's six more. These are, these are the other six. That's the, that's the secret of the six days of creation. And they said the light was good. Okay. Okay. That's a, there's a lot there. There's a it, bunch. It doesn't, doesn't really seem like it is, but there's a <laughs> lot there. A lot that's a rather. big thing. It's a big concept. And that's the secret of the beard. And it goes on to say that this is the biological reason why a person without a uh, repro- uh, procreative organ... Lacks a beard. 
uh, because it is without this characteristic and it cannot appear. This is, and this is the reason because of the union of Joseph to Rachel that she was beautiful in appearance. As if she... Joseph or Jacob? Huh? Joseph or Jacob? Um, Joseph... Um, hold on. I think it's... Jacob. Jacob. Uh, Jacob. Joseph and Rachel yeah. approached and bowed down. Because that was his son. Was Joseph, it? That was Rachel her mother. Was Joseph's mother. She's talking about her. He's talking about her so and his mother. mother. Yes, I, I, I'm getting there. Just took me a minute. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was thinking of husband and wife. No. But son and mother. Why um, would it be son and mother? Because they were approaching Jacob. Oh, oh going Esau. to the dad. Mm -hmm. Esau. Oh, okay. No, they were. No, Joseph. Not Jacob, Joseph. Uh, let me see here. I got a... Uh, well, where was Benjamin? <laughs> um, Mike, real quick, were you looking that up? Yeah, ma'am. Well, didn't, uh, didn't Joseph stand in front of uh, Rachel when they were approaching Esau? Jacob. No, I mean... Joseph, Joseph was in front of Benjamin. Did he protect his mother when they were approaching Esau? Yeah, and, and Benjamin. He was hiding them all. Yeah. He was hiding them. Mm -hmm. um, God created man. He created, he created, he, he made him in the image of the upper beings and lower beings. The combination of all. His light illuminated from one end of the world to the other. So Elohim created him in his own image. In the image of Elohim, he created them. Since it already said his image, why repeat it? In the image of Elohim he created him, he answered. These were the two levels of man, since he comprised male and female. Therefore, one for male, so Elohim created him in the image, and one for the female, in the image he created them. Now, he used and observed with his wisdom up and down. Because he sinned, these faces diminished. The wisdom disappeared from him, and he was only concerned with his own bodily matters. And afterwards, he begot sons from above and from below. That is, Abel was from the upper aspect, and Cain was from the lower aspect. And neither of them inhabited the earth. That'll tell you right there where that took place. <laughs> Since none of them left any descendants in the world, then he fathered a son, Seth, from him the world was planted. This has been explained. In spite of this, the world below was not finished and completed and was not sustained on its own until Abraham came along. The world was sustained but not complete until Abraham was, was present in the world and held on to the world with his right hand, that is Hesed, as one holds on and assists the right hand of someone who fell. Isaac came along and held the world with his hand, his left, that is Guru. The world was sustained even more. Then Jacob came along and held it in the center with his body, that is the central column, and it became to include on both sides, right and left. Then the world stood firm and did not collapse. And this is the, this is the rebuilding of it, well, this Parsha. And with this, the world was not properly planted with his roots until Jacob came along and begot the twelve tribes and the seventy persons, seventy souls, which we talked about earlier. And the world was was even planted, was planted even, and even so it was not complete until Israel received the Torah and the tabernacle was erected. At that time, the worlds could exist and were completed and the higher and <coughs> lower beings were scented. So all this histoshalut, all this whole thing, this is this whole thing is all one big time capsule that's one extension of the other. You, we can't say, oh, that happened then, that happened then, it was that happened. No. It's happening now. Therefore it is written, Hashem spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the tent of meeting. It is in the tent of meeting. Why is it required to be mentioned? Because we know it was in Sinai. 
since it was known that the tent of meeting was in no other place but the Sinai. Once is for the Torah, which is Zeron Pin, and once is for the tabernacle, which is Malchut Hishekinah. That is to say, they went out. Why does it say they went out? And he talks to them in the, in, 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 the, in the first month, on the second, you know, that whole thing where our whole partial starts out. Mm -hmm. That is to say, they went out from the aspect of the first month, which is Hesed, and the right column. And then they were perfected in the aspect of the second month, when he spoke to them, which is Guva wrote, and the left column. Come and behold, it is established that a blessing from above does not rest on something that has been <coughs> counted. Why does death result from counting? Because blessing cannot dwell there, and the blessing departs, and the other side rests upon it, and it is damaged. <laughs> Quit counting! Well, you only got a couple more days. Okay? Now, as, as we know, there are basically there are basically four camps, right? North, south, east, west. Mm -hmm. There are four. These four camps of the congregation of Israel are Hesed, Gurot, Teferet, and Malchut, and they are Michael, Gabriel, Uriel, and Raphael who represent the 12 tribes and the 12 boundaries and encircle her. Because Hesed, Guru, Teferit, Malkut, each have three columns for a total of 12. Everything reflects above the 12 boundaries of Zeron Pin. Michael is on the right, which is south. Gabriel to the left, which is north. Uriel to the front, which is east, and Raphael to the back, which is west, and the Shekhinah is on top of them. So did they travel with them? Yes, they were them. So Uriel? Raphael, Michael, and Gabriel. The yud -Hey is in the center, which is the secret of the two tablets of the testimony. yud -Hey, Abba and Ema, are in the center with the son and daughter, Zah and Nuk, mm -hmm. which are the secret of the two tablets of the testimony in the ark that traveled in their midst. And <coughs> the change of the order that we find here on the standards that moves east first, namely to Ferret, will be explained further. Now, I'm not going to go into all that. But it's all about the angels, the way they move. And for this reason, <coughs> if you want to have a male child, it is between north and south. Therefore, we are taught that whoever places his bed between the north and south shall have a male child. Because this male child, who is to ferret, is situated between north and south. Let's see if I've got any more nuggets. Oh, and do y'all remember what what was what was what was Jesus's last words? It's finished. That's pretty good. Yeah, I have to go with you with that one. Into your yeah, it depends on which gospel you read. How about into your hands I commit my spirit? Now, what is that? Well, this is, there's, there's the tree of life and the tree of death, which is the tree of knowledge of good and evil, right? Mm -hmm. The tree of life runs a, runs a day, the tree of death runs a night. So, you, when you go to sleep, mm. you're, you, the, the, the tree of death reigns, so your soul leaves and is with Hashem at night, and then the tree of life returns it during the day. So it, you return, <clears throat> you return the deposit to the one who gave it. In other words, your soul is the deposit. You're only keeping it for a little time. So every night your soul goes back, and this is what 
David meant, into your hands I commit my spirit. That was his midnight type of like prayer. You know, I'm going to go to sleep. And you must. That way the other side can't get it. Right? And so um, it has nothing to do with uh, what we've always thought it does. It has to do with sleep. <laughs> Um, I thought that was kind of interesting. <clears throat> oh, this is good. Um, this is this is uh, let's see. This is about Israel's blessing, Jacob's blessing. He said, "How could he see the Shekhinah?" Since it says now Israel's now the eyes of Israel were dim from old age. Genesis forty eight ten. Mm -hmm. However, it is written, changing hands. Why the crossing? And he explains. The right hand was raised corresponding to Ephraim, and the Shekhinah turned to the direction of Ephraim. And Israel smelled the fragrance of the Shekhinah over his head. And then he said, By you shall Israel bless. And he saw her in the west, meant that he did not see her with his eyes, but perceived by his sense of smell, which means from below upward. It smells like the horse. Yeah. These are the ones of wholeness by which the universe is blessed. We learn that whoever recites a praise of David, Psalm 145, three times daily, is assured to be worthy of the world to come. Hey, would you say a praise of David? Yeah, Psalm 145. It starts out a praise of David. Oh, so if you if you do that psalm three times a day, you are sure to be in the world to come. A praise of David and the rest of the hallelujahs, which are in order of the ten praises of the ten holy spirit of the ten holy name. <laughs> Therefore, there are ten hallelujahs, and concluding in the ten praises that are hallelujah, praise El, in the sanctuary. This is uh, Psalm. 150. Where do we find ten hallelujahs? There are only five. Since there are only five psalms that begin with hallelujah, he responds, it is because each psalm begins with hallelujah and concludes with hallelujah for a total of ten. Mm. Afterward, he established a sequence of the, of the song of the sea, which we've already gone over, that includes everything. The song of the sea includes everything. That's why we talked about earlier, you know, when we went over that, that if you say the song of the sea, you know, that's almost all you got to do because it has everything in it. With this, he accepts the yokes of the holy kingdom upon himself and hesed to rest in his prayers That's a whole big deal on that. Um, and that's all the cool nuggets I got out of the Zohar for y'all. Alright. So we learned a little bit more today than we than we knew before we started. About why they why numbers and, and you know most people when they read the Bible, they read it and they can make it to numbers. But when they get to numbers, they usually lose it because it's the names and the this and that. Well, that's that he's reconstructing the brain of a recon peen and the body, the, the brain of Adam. The, he's the whole that that's that's the crescendo. That's the of the whole thing right there. Next week, not so fast. Did y'all get that? It's not so.
Not so fat, man. Not so fat. <laughs> Ah, so next week we'll do nacho cheese. Uh, nacho cheese. <laughs> nacho cheese. <laughs> next week we'll do nacho, and we'll find something in there that's worthy of talking about. Something out of that 300 pages. Something out of that 300 pages we got in Zohar. <laughs> <laughs> Would you repeat the angels and which direction they 